Okay, so a few words about M-Files, uh, the company, and the ECM solutions. So M-Files is a leading ECM software. Uh, we're based out of Finland and the US. And at the moment, we're counting over 2,000 customers in about 100 countries. Uh, our solution is not limited to any particular industry. So we've got customers in manufacturing uh, services, the energy industry services. Uh, basically, all the customers that we have are experiencing similar problems with managing their documents and managing information. And in a recent customer survey or end user survey, 97.1% of MPARS users said that they find information much easier when they have MPARS installed. And Laminate Solutions is uh, an authorized MPARS solution provider in the UK. And uh, in a moment, LaRue is going to tell you a little bit more about Laminin, the company, and himself, and also if he goes to the demo on, on uh, what kind of solutions he can provide for you. Um, Mfiles recently entered the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Enterprise Content Management in 2012. So that really puts us up there with the main players in the ECM market. Um, and really that, that's an indication of, of that Mfiles is a product that's um, really up there with the best in the enterprise content management sector. Uh, we're also growing very fast, which is an indication, I think, of the usability and the, and the ease of use and the simplicity of the tool itself, in that uh, traditionally many ECM products have been quite complicated and difficult to implement. And the fact that we've been noted on the magic quadrant and we've got very fast growth really says that customers are liking what they see in them files. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you'll, hear the, you'll hear the word metadata quite a lot during today's uh, webinar and also during the demo. Now, what, what do we really mean when we say, when we say metadata-powered ECM? Uh, it really means that metadata gives you, um, as customers, the ability to really efficiently classify and organize information. And when you add metadata to documents or you have metadata within the, within the solution, it gives you an insight into the workflows and actions that go on in your company. Now, how is this different from existing ECM applications? So most um, ECM applications are built on what we call folder structures. So they'd be Windows folders or any kind of traditional hierarchical folder structure. And what happens is in those cases that if they do have metadata or tags as part of that folder structure, um, users really see that, that as the extra piece of work they do because they're already trying to save information into folders. Uh, on the other hand, with M-Files, which is a completely metadata-based uh, ECM solution, we don't have anything such as folders. It's all metadata-based. So that basically takes away the burden of having to think about where we save something, and instead we only think about what we're saving. Uh, so basically, if somebody's sending a document, we tag it with what it is. Is it a project? Is it a contract type? Is it related to a customer? And that really helps to efficiently and easily uh, first of all, save the information, but also then find the information later on. Okay, so that's the, the brief word about metadata. Now at this point, I'd like to hand over to, to LaRue, and uh, he'll take you through his introduction and the demo. Hope you enjoy it, and uh, please feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go along. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Leroux Salier. I'm the Solutions Director for Lemon and Solutions. I'm also the founder. We currently are operating uh, in the UK and in the US and South Africa. Uh, we're still a small company but have big aspirations. Uh, personally, I've been involved in M-Files for about seven years, but in the industry and in, in uh, working with information for many more years and I have a very particular passion to improve the use of information uh, particularly after I've gone through many large-scale ERP and other system implementations and have seen the impact that those have on uh, businesses uh, and that that does not necessarily improve the value of information in business so Laminant Solutions have a suite of software tools uh, and through the experience that we are adding to that, we help companies through consulting to them to, uh, to really focus on their information and 
to get more out of more value out of the information. In fact, if information uh, is in the business but it's not used, it's particularly uh, bad and, and and completely valueless. So, but also to reduce the cost of having the information in the business. So our motto is we optimize information and we connect solutions. So my aim today is that uh, this will be a very informative session for you, that you would enjoy it and uh, it, it, that would it give you an opportunity to see how um, uh, this particular angle to information management can uh, work in your business. So the agenda is all about why document manage, management matters for you. Um, JP has spoken about ECM. ECM stands for Enterprise Content Management and uh, the, the terminology around that is, uh, uh, is quite loosely used in terms of content document management. So, so it all refers to the same area. I'm basically going to cover just three things during this presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit about why is this relevant to you? Why should you listen and give us this hour of your attention? In the main, I'm going to demonstrate to you what MFALS has to offer and how, why MFALS is unique and what it is actually doing for uh, content management in a business. And then the, we, we will have some time for questions afterwards. Why does document management matter? Uh, the graph that you see is um, one of the graphs out of a research study done by AIM, which is the uh, largest watchdog in the world for information and content management. And they regularly do studies in terms of getting feedback from uh, companies like yourself to understand how you see it and what you do with it. And what companies have told them is that they are concerned about document management for the reasons that is on the slide. And, and at the top of it is to improve efficiency in the business and to optimize process, the business processes linked with compliance, both compliance that comes through regulatory uh, requirements as well as internal requirements. So if you look at it from that angle, then companies that have locked onto what document management can um, uh, mean to them and how it benefits to them have identified the key reasons why they're looking at and it is all about improving the business and you can get substantial benefit from that. If you are then asking the question and that is how am I doing about it, how is my organization doing about uh, 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 doing, then what this graph uh, predict, uh, 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 illustrates, and that is all of the different areas in a, a business that uh, content is involved in, and, and how businesses perceive how well they are doing with it, from on the left hand and the dark colors, chaotic, to it is very well managed. Now, if you look at that, then you can see that, uh, in, by and large, paper records are uh, reasonably well managed. There are still companies that believe that even their paper records are not well managed. Um, and then it goes through the different levels of complexity in terms of content. Now if you think of it that content is at the heart of your business. Your business cannot exist without all of the files and the paperwork and not necessarily paper as in paper but the electronic filing all of the other bits and pieces that encompass all of the communication, all of the things that's being shared in your business. Your business cannot exist without that. So this is all about what are you doing with that. The frightening thing is that there's a large, large part of business that is still confessing to say that, wow, we do not have our hands around our content management. And what they don't realize, or maybe they do realize it, and, 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 uh, but not yet doing something about it, and that is that there's a wealth of information and business intelligence that is linked with that, which is not being used 
it properly in the business and is creating inefficiencies. If we focus on more specific on electronic filing, then it's very evident that the majority of businesses are still focused on filing the electronic filing in files, in Outlook, in folders, uh, in all sorts of uh, uh, sundry systems and if you're one of those then uh, it is very likely that you will be uh, very accustomed to things like for instance you cannot find a document that you're looking for or you don't know where the previous person has filed it or somebody has moved the folder and you can't find it or maybe it is a question of that you do not know which is the latest version that you are looking for because the, there is a copy on about every folder in the system. Um, the, the folder system, as, as JP has indicated earlier, has, uh, was a fantastic invention, but it has significant limitations when it comes to finding and working with the information in it because it just does not provide the capability of doing it as demands in business currently as, uh, as, as um, with the increase in information there is just such a demand for better understanding and better information access that the folder systems can just cannot deliver that. M-Files delivers some key benefits and there's many uh, aspects to it but I want to highlight these and that is that it is a central document repository that basically provides the documents for everybody that have rights to it in a single location. Um, it has very robust search and discovery func uh, functionality and its indexing and its access to that information is just incredibly powerful. It improves security because suddenly you, it's not just you have either you have access or you don't have access but it is also you can have access to bits and pieces of it and it it, it makes it much more powerful in terms of how security is handled. It tracks what happens with that document. It knows who has changed it, when it has changed, and uh, it, it is possible to, uh, to control the versions for each one of them in a very tight way. Um, it supports compliance in regulatory industries where uh, maybe as ISO standards, maybe as medical standards, maybe it's other standards, uh, that is different in different countries whereby you need to comply with uh, demonstrating the control over those documents and uh, 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 M-Files is very powerful in its ability to do that. Ultimately, the company information and the knowledge in the business is managed much more effectively uh, and it is leveraged throughout the entire organization. Well, I've said enough on slides. What I want to do is I actually want to practically show this to you. Um, and uh, for your benefit, I've listed all of the areas that we will cover during this demonstration. So uh, maybe you, there is some areas that you have more particular interest in. Again, I want to encourage you uh, to uh, feel free to uh, pop questions uh, uh, as, as they come up uh, on your Q&A uh, uh, tab that you have on your screen. Um, and we will deal with those questions afterwards uh, as we go along. Let me go into our uh, demonstration system. The M-Files is available um, uh, from uh, many different places. You can get it from the start bar by just clicking on the start icon. You can get it on your desktop. There's a little icon here on the left-hand side that you basically can click on and you can, from that you can get uh, two M files. If we click on an icon here, um, if you have a single vault, then it would give you the opportunity to, uh, 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 to go directly in. I just want to illustrate uh, that if you log on to M files, uh, you have the option to, uh, or you have uh, an uh, uh, ID that is related to Windows. Uh, as a Windows user, that links through to Active Directory and therefore if you link in with that Windows ID, uh, you don't have to log on to MPALS because it knows who you are uh, or you can use a uh, MPALS user which is different. Yes. Laru, this is JP. Sorry for interrupting, but it seems that um, some people can't see the screen, the demo screen. 
Uh, so it's uh, frozen on where you switch the screen. Can you just try to go back to the slides and maybe switch to the demo screen again? Okay, let me just see whether it... Um, okay, now we can see. Ah, it. here we are. Right, okay. okay. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, thank you, JP. So, um, what, I was, what I was highlighting to people, and that is uh, that you can access it from anywhere, when the login screen comes up, then uh, you have the, uh, 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 if you have an ID that is related to Windows and Active Directory, it would take you directly in them, and that is what I'm using here. So if I click on it, it will not even ask me for my password because it's a single password and single ID login. This is the screen that, uh, uh, um, the, 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 let's call it the front page of M files. It's very Windows-like. Uh, uh, in fact, you can switch on your uh, navigation plane, which gives you access to your standard uh, browser and uh, uh, explorer uh, folders, and you can basically navigate through those folders. I tend to switch that off because it gives me a little bit more uh, space on the screen to work with. Um, so, in effect, what mFiles does it would, it, it would provide you with secure login in a very familiar Windows-like interface. The, what I would like to do uh, 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 next is, I just want to, is to illustrate to you how easy it is to create a new document. Now, you don't have to go to Microsoft and, or to another application to create it. You can create it directly from inside of mFiles. You just click on the create a new document. And this is where metadata really becomes important because what happens first is mFiles asks you what is it that you want to create. And it does that with opening up a what is called a metadata card and the way that this metadata card is organized is completely configurable it can be changed to what the documents uh, 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 in your company is and what you create and it can be organized in different ways so we've organized it here in sort of purchasing documents and sales documents and the likes uh, so what I want to do is I want to illustrate creating a proposal, so I'm going to choose a proposal. And when, it, uh, the, uh, uh, when I've done that, it would then ask me, do I want to use a template or do I want to create a document from scratch? Now, if I can create a document from scratch, and uh, in fact, all of the uh, applications on my system will appear as something that I can create a document from scratch with. So it would automatically create a Word document or an Excel document for me from scratch. But I'm going to create it. I'm going to use a template to create this document. And it then offers me a list of, uh, let's call it tags or properties, that is associated with this specific document to prompt me what is the things that I need to complete. Um, so it says that I need to complete a date and a customer, so we're going to basically work with ESTT. So I'm going to select uh, ESTT and you'll notice that if I now drop down on the project, it only offers me the projects that is related to EST and not a whole long list of uh, projects that I need to select um, and so forth. I can go down and I can add some more information. Now you'll notice that here's some asterisks here on the left, uh, right hand side, and that means that these are the required fields, there's other fields that's not required which I can leave out, and if I now basically say OK, what it would do, it would open Word. mFiles very tightly integrates with Word with a result that uh, uh, not only does the uh, wording for, that I've set up in my normal Word document template have come through, 
but also the details of the company has come through and that is done through the integration of M files. So if I basically uh, 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 illustrate that by, by showing you that you have access to all of the properties that uh, is available for this particular document in M file. So if I want to put the last uh, modified by uh, field into my document, I can do that. And if I do that with uh, in the template itself, rather than the document that I'm now creating, then that would uh, come up every time. And it would prompt me to actually automatically fill in the name of the, admin, uh, of the person that has last updated this document. I can now file this document by just uh, by going out of it. I then can save the document and then it asks me whether I want to check it in. Now the meaning of that is that basically while I'm working on this document I have control over it and I need to pass control back to uh, the, the system and because I didn't click it and I was a little bit slow, it just did it automatically for me and I checked that document in. So let's go and have a look at where that document uh, went to. So I'm going to just navigate to it and I'm going to go look at it by class and I know that I've done a proposal so I'm going to click on the proposal and here is all of the proposals that has been created and there we can see the document is there uh, in the system. Now if I click on the document it opens up a space here at the bottom where it then displays all of the metadata that is associated with this particular document and there you can see that it has added all of the items that we've done but it has also done something very interesting and that is it named the document automatically it gave it a proposal number it added the name of the company in the uh, in the name of the file now, this is very powerful because I don't have to type in a name. The system can give any naming conventions that you can think about. It pretty much can deal with that in some other form. But what is more, it filed that document in exactly the right place because what it has done is it has associated that document with the project. And if I basically click on the project, I can see all of the details of the project. And it has also associated it with a company and now I can see the company and I can see all of the, uh, the different details of the company, its address, its telephone number and any other details that I wish to effectively add to the company, uh, uh, company records. It also, you could also even drill further down because now I can look at everything that is associated with that company. So if I now go and I see, ah, I click on the company and I drill down I can see all of the projects that are associated with it and all of the documents. Why I'm doing this is what Impulse have done is through the metadata it built all of the connections and you can find anything from anywhere by just uh, either navigating through it or looking at it. So what, what have we learned through, uh, 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 up till now? So let's just go back to our uh, guide. And we have shown you that uh, the Explorer integration gives you something that is very similar to your local drive because MFILES has become a local drive for you. Uh, I've also created a new document and I've shown you the power of metadata. I've shown you how templates can be used in MFILES to integrate data into those documents and automate it, how it integrates with Word how it automatically files and again as JP has pointed out right at the start we didn't need to know where do we need to file this document after we complete uh, created this document all that we had to know is what are we creating and by filling the data in of what are we creating it just dealt with that document in exactly the right way. Going back to our presentation um, what I would like to do, and that is that not, uh, uh, one would not necessarily always navigate to go and find a document. So you don't have to now remember oh, which folder do I need to go to to actually find it. You can use the powerful search functionality of Impulse to do that. So if I uh, 
you know, for argument's sake, just put in the company name that I've typed in and I uh, uh, search for it, then it basically shows me the result. The result is that I get everything in which EST basically appears. So all of the documents that is, uh, that is there, I see all of the contact people, and if I click on the contact people and I navigate up, let me just uh, increase the screen there, then I can see all of the information that is associated with it. So it is very easy to just type in a search term and find it. But I have a whole range of optimization tools with search that would make it even much more powerful. For instance, um, I can search not only in the metadata, which I've done here, but I can search in the file content. That means that any text recognizable information can be discovered by using this search functionality. I could also uh, 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 narrow down my search by saying I only want to look at, a, uh, at the customers. I don't want to see all of the information. So if I only look at customers, I will only get the, the customer record and I can work from there. But because maybe I just want to quickly uh, edit the customer or I want to uh, see what the telephone number is or something to that effect. M-Files goes much further than that because it uh, has advanced uh, uh, facilities in its search capability where you can search by specific uh, uh, property to say, uh, you know, with all of the different conditions on a, a particular property. And if that is not enough, it actually adds also additional condition settings. So you can see that the power of the search within M-Files is incredibly strong. Hence, 97% of users saying that it is easy to find stuff in M files. In fact, most of my customers you, uh, uh, do not basically navigate to find something. They search and do. Because you do not need to be in a specific folder to find something, do something, and save it in the folder. You can find it, do it, wherever you find it and it knows what to do with that, file, uh, with that document. It just files it back in the right place. So I'm going to go back to our guide so to, to, uh, and see what, is it, what did we learn from this last uh, couple of minutes. We demonstrated how easy it is to find uh, information in M files that this is all driven by the metadata that uh, uh, is underlying in M files that we can find things and don't forget that we can search by content. So if it, even if it's not in, uh, in metadata, uh, the system indexes it and we can easily find it. Next, I just want to see what this next, sorry. Although Although I have uh, navigated to these, uh, these uh, items here in the middle, which is called common views, um, I haven't said much about it. What Impulse does, it provides the capability for the users to define views. And views is a logical view. It is a powerful way of saying, I want to look at something in a very specific way. So let me illustrate it to you. You remember that last time we uh, uh, navigated down to proposals and we looked at the list of proposals. So now we can go and look at the same proposal, but this time around we're going to look at it by customer. So if I go into and, I get, and this view is set up so I can look at all my customers, if I click on my customers, customers, I look at all of the documents for my customer and here I have a list of what is the type of documents that I have. In fact, I have the facility to uh, dynamically add any column that I want to. I can choose a column that I want to add at any time and have that column there. Um, I could also see the same document by project. So I can look at a project and I uh, uh, and go into my design pro uh, project and here's all the documents that is related to the project. The power of the uh, uh, of the views is that you can set up a, a view that gives you the result exactly in the way that you want to. You do that by simply creating a view 
and by uh, you set in the first place you set by defining the filters you set how uh, what you want to look at and here in the bottom in terms of the structure you actually say how you want to look at it and which format you want to look at it you press OK and you see the uh, you see a view and it is possible to define views for an individual user you can restrict views uh, uh, from from uh, um, uh, you know from certain users so you can say that uh, certain views can only be seen by certain uh, users so the power of using these uh, views is incredible so I can quickly go back to our guide then we have seen that MFAS provides standard views that you can work with. It's very folder-like. It's very much a navigation of what you want to see. From there, you can get all of the relationships, and you you can get what you want. One thing that I missed in terms of showing you, and that is a very interesting view for uh, that uh, MFAS created, which is called recently accessed by me. Uh, this is something that's very handy because if you click on that, uh, it would show you a list of the things that you have just done. And there is a proposal that we've just created. Um, so it just lists uh, the items that is there and you don't even have to go and search for it to navigate to it. It is just there. The I've shown you how to create a document from uh, uh, um, inside of M-Files. Now I want to basically show you how easy it is to get the document from your own filing system, uh, your old folder structure, into M-Files. So what I will do, so I just uh, resize the M-Files uh, so I can get another uh, window on the system. I'm going to go to my documents and I have a folder here with, um, uh, uh, with a couple of files that we can file. And it is literally a process of taking that, pulling it over to any place in M files, and letting go of the mouse. And what happens here is it identifies that this is a TIFF file, so it's even asking me whether I want to convert it to a optical character recognized file. Um, if I basically, let's say I want to convert it, so it converted this file to a PDF and a searchable file, but now it asks me what is it that you are filing. So let's say that we are filing a contract or an agreement, and you'll notice that this time around there is a completely different set of items that comes through that has asked me to file. This time it wants a name because it doesn't have automation for the name set up. So we can, we're going to say this is an NDA agreement. And uh, if I put it is a purchasing agreement and the owner of the agreement is uh, myself. And who's going to approve the content for it? John is going to approve it. And which customer does it relate to? Uh, it uh, relates to ESD. These rules are all set up in the, uh, depending on your particular requirements for your particular situation, what is it that you want to see um, in your organization. So, and we're going to say it is effective from that day and you'll notice here at the bottom it automatically uh, uh, pushes that into uh, a workflow into agreements. And we'll talk about workflow again, just wanted to point that out at this stage. And if I now file for this document, then uh, that document that's in MPILES. If I go to recently access, then there is my document. It has uh, renamed it. It has given it a number. I, uh, it has uh, put the name that I gave it, NDA agreement, and the company name onto it. And you can now also uh, scroll down and find all of the relationships that it has that it has now created. And let me just increase the size. You can see my screen properly. So what, what did I do? I've, I've illustrated to you what is the uh, uh, power of filing something from externally into M-Files. It's a situation of dragging and dropping. You don't know, need to know where you're going to file it. 
You don't need to navigate anywhere. You just know, need to know what you are filing and it does it automatically. Now, I've done a single document. If you do large-scale um, uh, importing of documents, there are other tools also to help in that process, but by and large, you can do multiple documents in the same way uh, as long as the rules uh, are similar so that it makes it easier for you to say what you are filing. Um, the, the next thing that I want to illustrate, I just want to, is, is working with emails uh, and how you would file, uh, file emails. So the, just before I do that, I just want to send myself an email so that uh, uh, there will be something there that I can file. So if I go into my emails and I do a send and receive, then, ah, I've just received an email from uh, uh, Daniel Hall uh, from EST, and this is a confirmation of an order. So uh, MFILES integrates very tightly with, uh, 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 with Outlook, and therefore it automatically, when you install it, it creates a new uh, uh, folder for your vault in, M uh, in Outlook. So, You'll notice that the one that we are working on is here. So all that I need to do is I basically need to take that and I need to drag it onto that and let go. And if I do that, it brings up the metadata tag and it says, ah, what do you want to file? So what do I want to file? I want to file a confirmation of order. So I put that in and again it comes up with a metadata prompt in, uh, that is again a little bit different to basically say what is it that you need to know when you file a confirmation of order. I need to know a date. It, uh, uh, note that it automatically put in the customer name and even the contact name. How does it know it? It know it because it looks at the domain and at the user email address and it automatically links it to the customer and the contact person and I just need to act, uh, now put in the project and effectively my item is filed and it adds a little icon here uh, in the right hand side to say this item is filed in M files. If I now right click I can go and I can show this in M files and I can go directly to that item in M files to go and have a look at how did it file it. If I do that and I drop down you'll notice that it filed it as a message um, uh, uh, and separated the message and the PDF file. And at this point in time, I want to uh, highlight another very nice feature of M files. It has this little eye here on the right hand side, which gives you a quick view. So if I click on the item, I don't have to open the item to see what is in that file. I can just have a quick view and I can read the message uh, to uh, um, you know that I want to do. And that will come up in a, uh, in a second, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push on, go into, um, uh, uh, into Outlook, I've double clicked the email, and what it does, I can now reply to that email and send um, uh, uh, you know, my own comments or uh, feedback on that email. So in the meantime, it actually decided to display our email also there. So the, uh, the integration between Outlook and M files as really sort of, it just works together to make it easy for you to file and to keep your uh, emails organized. And why is it important? It's important because what you have done is you've just made this email independent of your own mailbox. And therefore, that email is now available to anybody in the organization and it is filed in the right place and people can get access to that email. Um, also want to point out that if you uh, add some additional folders under the uh, vault like we are doing here, then you can uh, add even further power of automation by specifying specific metadata and properties associated with the item to, to drive a further productivity in the business. So, so, so the, the integration between Outlook and MFILES is unique in the way that it deals with it and that it helps you to, uh, uh, to optimize your business and to get the information at the right place because that is important so, so people can find the information that they need. Um, 
So what did we learn? We've shown you how easy it is to drag and drop emails, to get it into M files, how it automatically assigns uh, the metadata to the email so that you don't have to go and fill it in yourself. And I've also shown you how it splits the attachment from the email so you don't have to open the email first before you can, uh, uh, before you can see how it works. Version control. I've spoken uh, 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 to, uh, to you and I've mentioned to you a couple of times that uh, one of the key features of any proper document management system is that it, uh, it keeps track of all of the changes that is taking place. So what I'm going to do to illustrate that is we're going to take a document and uh, um, we're going to make a change to it. So we're going to take that proposal and we're just going to make a change to it. And I'm going to save it back. If I now go and I look at the history of that document and I click here on the left hand side, you'll see that that document was created uh, as version 1 by myself at uh, 3.23 and I've made a change to it in, at 3.43. Uh, now the change is, uh, is inside of the document, it's not a, docu uh, it's not a change to the metadata, uh, but if I want to roll back, if I want to say, oh wait a moment, this is not the latest version, this is actually an incorrect change, I want this version to be the, the, the current version, I can roll back to that version and I can use the functionality of, uh, of Word to show the differences between those documents on an individual basis inside of those documents. So MFILES keep control of every change and allows you to go back to a previous change and it does that not by saving a full file every time and you know uh, clog up a, uh, a hard drive but it saves it in a very optimized way by only saving the actual bits that has changed between the different versions in, and therefore it keeps uh, a space in mind. Um, we've learned, uh, I've, I've taken you through that and what I want to uh, show you a little bit about and that is how you would handle scanning in M files. Now, scanning uh, in principle works quite simply that you would connect a scanner to your uh, desktop or it may be a, a network scanner and that scanner will just scan uh, to a folder and to imitate that I have a, uh, a folder here um, that uh, here's all my folders and these are, this is a, a, a link through to the, uh, to the server um, and I have a purchasing, uh, purchasing uh, a folder there that we are going to scan to. So I'm going to scan this invoice and, and I, there's no scanner connected uh, here at the moment and it's not visible to you so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy and paste a document into that folder as if we are going to scan it. Now there's my document, I'm going to leave it for a second there and what mFiles is now doing is it is using um, uh, its intelligence in the background to move that folder to M files and that's what I want to illustrate to you. So I'm going to go into the administration module of the M files and this is the module that basically the administrators that will use to set up M files and control the behavior of things in the background. Um, and we have the, uh, the, the vault that I'm demonstrating here to you today and as one of the items here it is connection to external sources. So what MFILES does, it allows uh, uh, the system to automatically link to, uh, to folders outside of itself and do things with it. So if I go and uh, have a look at that, then we've set up a, uh, a, a link to a folder and that's the folder that we are linking to and 
we have specified it to import the file and there's all sorts of different alternatives that you have in terms of how that it need to behave. You can specify the metadata and, and in this case we said if you find a file in this folder then we want you to change it into a purchase invoice and to add it to this particular workflow and there is a, 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 a range of other rules that has been set up to do that. So let us go and illustrate what has happened to this particular item. And that is that uh, if I go into M files, now we know that we have uh, scanned the purchasing document, so we would expect that that becomes a purchasing document. So I'm going to go to a view that uh, have purchasing invoices in, and here is all my purchasing invoices and the item that we have just scanned. Now what I want to uh, show you is what has happened because effectively we've scanned it the file, it converted it to a PDF document and may and automatically recognized it as text um, and what it also has done is it added to a workflow and it uh, sent an assignment to demo user to effectively act upon this. Let's go and have a look at it. Um, now, two things would have happened. First of all, I would have received an email. So, I expect if I go into that and go into the right folder, then I have received an email which says, you have a new assignment from uh, this uh, user. Your invoice is awaiting checking. So I can, without necessarily having to go back into M files, I can click on this link and this link will take me directly to the item that I need to work with and act upon. However, for the moment, I don't want to use that. I want to go and show you where uh, uh, this is also in my list of assignments. So if I go back to the root and I go and look at my assignments uh, that or everything that has been assigned to me, there is the item that has been assigned to me. So effectively I can get a list of everything that has been assigned to me, I can get a message in terms of what I need to do with it and now I can act on it. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to uh, 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 look at it and say, oh wait a moment, it doesn't have a customer name and project so I need to basically add that information and we're going to do it again to this project. Uh, there's nothing else that I need to fill in, so I can uh, say, oh, no, wait a moment. Uh, I've missed this one because I didn't fill in the document date and the document uh, date is required. So I need to basically fill in, as I said earlier, if it has an asterisk, it would always check whether you filled in the data. Uh, I can now say OK, and it has added the, uh, uh, the uh, information I can use my little eye to go and check the document to see whether I'm happy that this is the document that I can approve and I can, uh, uh, I can say this document is checked and awaiting approval. So if I do that, now what I would like to do just before I press the button here is you'll notice that currently is in the state received and awaiting checking and it says uh, uh, the message to me is a new invoice is awaiting checking. So if I basically press OK what it has now done, it has, because it assigned it again to myself, uh, it is still in my assigned to me box, which you can see from the top, and it has a new uh, message that says a new invoice is awaiting approval. So you could see that it is actually, although it appears as if it is still in my, uh, my box, it is a new document or is an, uh, it is a changed uh, item uh, because it's in the next state. If I now uh, uh, go on and I say, oh, wait a moment, I'm quite happy with this, I'm going to approve it and I could uh, put in a message if I would like to, but if I approve it, then it's gone out of my assignment because, and let me go back to the item that I've uh, had previously here, the, the, uh, no, that's the wrong one, sorry, I just want to... Uh, They, it's the one that um, uh, I opened when I clicked on the email 
you'll see that the item is now approved and it is assigned to Kimberly. So Kimberly will basically get the item to, uh, uh, you know, to follow through with it. So in that way, we've now covered the version control, we've covered the scanning, and we've shown you how the external connection uh, can operate and work, and we have shown you the power of the automatic workflow, how it can assign permissions, how it validates and send notifications for it. So it is incredibly powerful. I want to close uh, by uh, uh, focusing a little bit on the fact that mFiles is available from anywhere. Now, the, the interface that I've been working with here is called the client interface. It means that it's a piece of software that is installed on each individual PC and that interacts with the server. However, mFiles is also available as a as a from a browser. So if I log into the browser and this is just a uh, so so that's the uh, the um, browser link and let me just log in here. There we go. Just thinking a little bit, and you'll notice that the you'll notice that the um, uh, the interface is very similar to the interface that we've had with uh, with a client. There's a little bit of different behavior, but uh, so so you can you can access M files by typing in a URL, and you can get to your documents that you want to get to. Um, we can search for our EST document there uh, and we will find exactly the same documents that we've been working with and we have all the functionality. We can open that document, we can change it, we can read it, whatever we want to do with it. Um, it is also available on mobile. So if I go into a mobile access and because mobile doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't offer all of the functionality yet that, that you have in uh, 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 the other uh, access media. Uh, it is still limited, but let me just log in and, and show you what it, uh, what it offers. So you can, you can imagine that this is your, uh, your phone or your iPad, and basically you can, you can see the information you can see, uh, you know, a, a very handy button is that you can uh, go and look at all of the items that you've been recently worked on. Uh, you can search for items. So if I basically want to go and search and find uh, uh, find the address for my uh, for ESDT, so that I can quickly go and uh, 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 go and call them while I'm on the run, then I have the ability to go and look up the information and find their telephone number while I'm on the run and, and waiting at the airport. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of the items that I wanted to demonstrate to you from mFiles. I trust that that was uh, a, a, a good overview and I would like to, uh, to ask whether there's any questions uh, that uh, myself or uh, JP can answer. Uh, JP, is there any questions? Okay, thanks, Lou. So um, there wasn't uh, any questions that came in. There was one one comment that came in, and then there's also uh, just one thing I'd like to point out, which is a very common question that customers ask. But first of all, there was a comment that uh, the email integration is one of the most useful features of M files, uh, since most companies don't back up individual client PCs on the local network. So that's very true. So uh, it may be that uh, quite often individual users on their local inbox have very important emails uh, saved, 
which should actually be saved in a central location which everyone can find them, especially if the PC happens to uh, crash or be corrupt, for example. Um, then I'd just like to actually just point one thing out, which is a very common question we get on these webinars, is when we're looking at metadata, for example, the customer data for ESTT and the contact person, Daniel Hall, that we saw in the demo, is, you know, how do we get the metadata? Where is that metadata coming from? And that's obviously a key question. So the idea is that the metadata is actually integrated from external systems, for example, the CRM or the ERP for project data, because those systems have the master data uh, stored. So we're actually only taking the metadata from an existing data source which has the master data. Okay. Um, but th there were no further questions, so I'd just like to point out, well, first of all, thank you, LaRue, that was a very good demo and, and, and uh, presentation. Uh, I'd just like to point out that you can contact both LaRue or myself and M-Files uh, through the email addresses uh, displayed on the slide there. Uh, you can also download a trial of M-Files from laminatesolutions.com. So that gives you a 30, 30 day free trial of M-Files that you can play around with and try on your own personal laptop. Uh, there's also a Twitter chat, so Laminin, at Laminin Solution and at MFiles, so please follow us. Uh, there's plenty of uh, useful ECM and document management information on both of those uh, Twitter accounts. And then if you have any questions that come to mind after this presentation and demo, you can also uh, put those messages to Laminin and MFiles and just use the hashtag Laminin Demo, as you can see in the slides there and we'll follow up on those questions and you can also see what other people are asking if you're interested in that. Okay, so at this point I'd like to thank all the participants for your attention and of course your valuable, valuable time. We do appreciate it and we look forward to your questions maybe later on in downloading M-Files. Thank you. <laughs>